Welcome back to the UKLC, the only sporting event that you need to be watching right now. Said no one ever, but I'm really excited for this one, Jamal. We've got a great yeah. game to be kicking off the latter half of our day. It's going to be Viperia taking on Enclave. Yeah, and what's kind of exciting about this one is we just, you know, we just had two upsets back to back. Mm. Uh, and now we come to a game with no clear favor, in my opinion. Uh, what happens at this point? Uh, do we see... What, 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 like actually what happens like who who wins uh, i think both these teams have very unorthodox drafting styles and, and you know favorite champions we'll, we'll phrase it like that uh so pick bands gonna be very very interesting to me i think uh we could see things like uh sykes's zigs removed away because zigs as a champion has risen a lot in priority here in the uklc uh as one of those picks that kind of stalls out the game for a lot of teams uh, can be hard to play around. Wouldn't be surprised to see that one move the way. Uh, Scoomond having his new new band. It's a very common thing. But honestly, even when it's been up the one time, it wasn't picked uh, away immediately by Enclave. So uh, we'll have to see what continues to happen with that new new. Will we ever see Scoomond play it? <laughs> Questions no. to be asked for a later date. But one thing which is very, very uh, important to note here, by the way, if Viperia are able to win this game, uh, it will mean that we will have a all-way tie for fourth place. Uh, there'll be four okay. teams sat at five and six. Uh, so Viperia winning this one keeps them uh, in the race with the playoff teams. Enclave, if they were to win here, would elevate them above the rest of the pack. Would give Bulldog and Envision in particular a slightly harder time to come to. Of course, Bulldog still have to play Enclave. Uh, not tomorrow, but next Sunday. As Bands going pretty slowly in this one. Yeah. Carly removed away by Viperia, Enclave. Also removing away Zinzao. A lot of talking must be going on uh, in between these bands. Typically, bands fly through pretty quickly. So interesting to see, or curious to see, really, what exactly Viperio in particular are going to first pick. There's plenty of power left available. Of course, having to bat away Nunu does mean that there's going to be some power left on the map. You've got Viego taken away. Stuff like the Nocturne is consideration. Stuff like Diana. We've seen Diana have two very successful games. Um, even though Bakoko didn't win, Overall, the Diana was definitely, when things were going right for Resolve Academy, it was Diana at the center of it. It will be the Nocturne taken off the table, so there's there's plenty that can be picked up. Also, stuff like the Fresh, which has seen a lot of high-priority play in recent weeks, also available. Yeah, so I want to see how Viper are going to play, especially because they brought in Dakin, uh, mm. who, I mean, I don't know, it just strikes me as such a strange time to bring Dakin in now, because as far as I recall, the original plan was, you know, join Rico in for the first week, Dakin in after that. Uh, and now what happens to the dynamic of a team, you know, when you bring in a player, especially as impactful as the jungle role is at the moment, and typically always has been when it comes to the voice in a team, basically halfway for a split, or on the back end of a split, the most important end when you're trying to secure a playoff position, when Johnny Rico has been playing fine, to be honest with you, uh, does just strike me as strange, a strange time, but they are going to prioritize the Diana for himself. Enclave now, what are you going to do? Looks like ooh, Ghana. Wow, okay, bit of a throwback there. Uh, oh, yes. We'll see what that gets paired up with. Looks like the answer will be set. So taking away the set Diana combination uh, from Viperio as a potential option as Shida, pretty good at the set champion. So nice takeaway info, also pretty damn good himself. So Viperio, what are the answers going to be? Because you know set's going to be one of the solo lanes. You're going to lock in someone like Renekton uh, to secure sort of a potential winning matchup. Rightly, however, is a big set player. So you can't even really be uh, super secure in the set going into a side lane. It, yeah, it could be going pretty much out of the center is, is, say, is available, so they could be going for that one down in the bot side, but it's going to be fresh. Well, it's coming yes. home. Thresh oh. locked in uh, here for uh, <laughs> for Haas. Just give it a sec. Uh, and honestly, if they want to, they can go with Felios right here uh, for Kum Kum, but he's preferred the Jinx always, and now it's actually the Ziggs hover, maybe looking at a takeaway from uh from Sykes and it will be the case here yeah it's gonna be a champion that we've seen more and more in the past couple of patches very very strong and the bot side can also go mid if that's what they decide to do with it Sykes gonna have to decide what he wants to be picking into potentially that Ziggs but more realistically something blind but doesn't have to do that right away there's still marksman options available and it's a role that can be pretty easily pinched out if they do decide to go that direction it's gonna be the Tristana locked in so there's the flexibility bot mid for both teams yep Exactly that. Where will the Tristana go? Feel like feels more like an impulse champion than a Sykes champion, so that yeah. would be my immediate uh, guess. But Enclave now 
You know, you've got sort of a clear path to ban away top laners, I think, is like the easiest place to target. Uh, if you've Hyperio, I'm not actually sure where you would want to go. There's a lot of flexibility with these champions. What will the move be? I mean, Trinity being taken off the table does make sense. 2P likes that champion. Um, definitely a strong pickup uh, for him in the past couple of games. We've got plenty more power in this game, more than the others we've seen today. It has been more about focusing targets onto specific players where they're pocket picks as opposed to just strictly good meta champions with the Nunu and the Trindamir being removed. Nautilus, we're kind of more back on form here, trying to get rid of some of these strong engaged supports. Yeah, definitely so moving away the Nort just because you've got that Thresh always a strong option. But again, Rightly could be on that set. Now with the Thresh being there, it does uh, admittedly sort of negate the potential for that to be a thing. Um, but you never know, and Enclave actually paying respects to the flexibility of the Ziggs, removing away the Varus, they don't have to deal with the double poke, double range uh, that that combination can bring. It can be very, very potent, especially when right now Enclave aren't working with a whole bunch of engaged themselves. So for Viperia, what are they going to do? They're going to remove away potentially something like Leona, and they're going to double dip into the support pool. Yeah, there it is. Uh, looks like Brawn, so yeah, they will do that. Interesting to see what they decide to pick up there. Definitely not wanting some of these beefier support options. They have left up it's we'll have to see what they're going to go into because of course morgana and set can both go down into that role so they could have just thrown blind bands into that position yeah. um but we'll have to see exactly what enclave decide to round out their composition with where they want to put that and it looks like with that hover alistair being locked in set and morgana being freed up into those solar lanes and it will be a beefy support down in the bot side yeah i don't know how i feel about this alistair though especially into fresh it's such a tough matchup in the 2v2 and when you've got Tristana, that's kind of what you want to play for, typically. Hmm. Uh, obviously, Trist can scale, but her dueling potential is so damn strong. There's the Renekton uh, mentioned earlier on in the draft. Wasn't ever banned away by Enclave, so I want to be surprised to see this one snapped up. And oh, there you go. Likely to be in the hands of Shader. Let's see what this last blocking will be. Of course, we'll re reveal exactly where the Ziggs is going. As loads of options, really. I think Ziggs going into the bottom lane wouldn't be a terrible shout when you're dealing with uh, what is likely going to be Tristana plus Alistan. Mm -hmm. Stuck in another mid laner, in my opinion. Or Topi. He's got a lot of wacky picks. Saw the Silas hovered earlier. Could be that, and it will be that. Yeah, it's going to be locked in for Viperia. Now it's on Enclave to decide just to show us if that Tristana will be going into that bot side or if it will be going mid. It's going to be going bot with Kassadin being the lock in for Sykes. This one's definitely more in flavor for the mid laner from Enclave and gives them a very strong scaling option. Yeah, and here's the thing, there's so much magic damage from the side of Hyperio too. It's only really the Renekton that's dealing physical damage here. Obviously, Kassadin takes reduced magic damage. And not only that, Silas isn't really that tough of a lane for him. Plus, it's a Diana, so he's going to be a little bit worried about some of the setup that can come from Silas when it comes to the ganks. But other than that, Sykes should have a free time to scale up on this Renekton. It's a bit of a ticking time bomb because there's not, there's not a lot of scary CC for him to worry about. In my opinion, it's, you know, dodge away from the Moonfall, make sure Renekton doesn't stun you up. Other than that, you're pretty free reign. Vada. Yeah. I know. It's coming home. It is coming home. Just want to let, yeah, let you it, know. Yeah. Just, sometimes, you know, there's, there's there's other things you need to talk about other than League of Legends. Hairbrain does it all the time, okay? Yeah, it, he does. It, I, you know, I actually had a question for you, Jamal. I was thinking about this sure. last game, but like it never came up. Um, properly. We talked about the Insect in one of the games where it was a really nice kick-in from the Lee Sin. And uh, it got me thinking, if there was a League of Legends play called the Jamada, what would it be? What's your um, signature? It would be... Oh, That's a good question. I'm actually not too sure. Um, It could be, it could be a bad play. Yeah, that's what I'm, th I'm thinking about bad plays, to be honest with you. Uh, it would it would be something to do with either Gangplank or, or, or Kane, probably. I can't think of what, but uh, it'll be one of the two. Uh, hopefully, we don't have a really long loading screen. I think whenever we have Enclave, the, the loadings are notoriously very You know, cool. we, got, we got some time. There's, you know, get your second uh, monitors up, lads. Yeah, get your second monitors up, guys, because uh, I think you're in for a bit don't of Don't tell production or anything, because I want to be invited back, but... <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, we'll have to... See how it goes, you know. Yeah. We'll 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 get we'll get there eventually. 
um, with this game because this is the most important game we've got today, I think, in terms of the standings. And it's been made even more important with our um, the first two results going not the way that we expected. And honestly, London Esports probably quaking in their boots going into our final game, seeing all the teams above them being absolutely executed by lower ranking teams. And then looking at Lucent like, ah, maybe, maybe you're going to cause us some issues. But... We're going to keep our eyes on this one. And as you say, this is the only game where there can't really be an upset because while we both predicted Viperio to win, when I questioned you on it, you didn't really give me an answer. I don't know. And listen, listen, look, I think both these teams have strong individuals that they can okay. very easily play towards. True. For Enclave, I've harped on it loads of times. It's rightly, it's impulse. These guys are prime one and pro division players. Uh, put resources into them, Enclave. I'd, I'd, I don't know what else to say. Like, unless you want me to turn up to your scrims and like coach your team. I, I would put, love you to turn up to my scrims and coach my team. We are awful. <laughs> put issue, resources so. into these guys. I promise you they will pull wins out of the bag for you. Obviously, Sykes also does pull out some pretty magical performances from time oh. to time. So it's not like we should understate his value either. Uh, either an in for seems to more be a utility slash short backup carry worst comes to worst for Enclave. And then when it comes to Viperio, you know, the, the wackiness of some of their picks through Topi. Uh, Kum Kum giving him a secure sort of lane carry to play for, which they've done in this game. Uh, I think they are a pretty versatile team. A lot of this team have their own individual merits to play towards. And I feel like when you've got teams like that where, you know, the rough or the relative level of everybody else is kind of close to or similar, it becomes difficult to really find a, a mode that works for you. Um, and I actually brought it up with, uh, why have I forgotten? It's one of the rest of the last game uh, from Bulldog. Because they've got so many talented players, it's like, okay, mm. do we put resources into Jacob? Do we put resources into Thomas Go? Coat is a is a tank player, yes, but he's also a very proficient tank player. So even putting resources into him is, isn't a terrible idea. Lulus seems to want to be a high resource player, uh, though it's yet to necessarily always be a consistent thing. Where do we go? with our teams, with our drafts, uh, with our resources in game. Uh, that will always be the question for me with Viper. but hey, we're here. On this we're on Sobler's Rift. Yeah. We're home, Jamada, is where we are. And we're going to be watching Viper on the blue side, taking on Enclave on the red. Of course, it's the classic branding reversed for this game. And is there a composition that you prefer here, Jamada? Is there something, are you looking at one of these two team comps and going, yes, that's the one that's going to win this game? Yeah, well, I look at the Enclave draft and I say, honestly, this Cassadin pick has potential to be such a game-breaking pick that I, I start to favor it. I think if Viperio can punish it in the early game, uh, then there's certainly room for it. But, you know, Diana, not the strongest early ganker. Set, uh, Silas does have setup, but there's not like a crazy amount of burst damage to come out. Uh, of these two champions if Sykes saw starts to approach post level five, especially once she has the Rift Walk as well. Life just gets so much easier. So we're likely to just see Sykes pretty much farm up a storm here in the mid lane. Uh, and I look towards Gumon then I say, especially in the 2v2 with the Black Shield, how are you guys going to kill this, this Kastin? They might not. And if they can't deal with Kastin, then he's going to deal with you. Uh, from experience seeing this champion in competitive play, but it's going to be a little bit of a time until Sykes gets to that position. Because Kastin's one of those that you need a little bit in order to scale up. Looking at the rest of the composition, Morgana Jungle. Haven't seen that pick around these parts too recently. Is it still something that's particularly spooky? Um, It's not as strong as it's obvious, you know, 11.8 form, but uh, still, you know, we've actually seen a couple of more jungles come out. I'm going to hold this point because Shader and yeah, Info there's a commit. massive fight in the top side, and who's gonna win it out? Info needs one more punch and will be able to secure the kill. Heading back to base with the first blood gold in pocket, and these two teams will start going at it from level one. Yeah, yes they do. There won't be any breaks here in the top lane, and a lane that can be versatile and typically considered pretty renekton and favored because you can remove the shield away. But if you don't have level three, Set is gonna win, as uh, we saw right there and comes back into lane and wins the trade. And you can see, in four, he comes back with two, uh, two cloth armors. He's like, yeah, I'm in a losing lane. I'm not here to win. <laughs> uh, I'm here to neutralize. 
And we'll pick up that Bramble Vest. We'll eventually start to cut into some of the healing available to Shida as a uh, dash in, dash out. You can see it can be a bit of an obnoxious lane for in 4 2 pilot when it comes to taking the trades, but handling it well with that first blood and Scoomon up on the top side should get the skull. Actually has double lane priority. Uh, Sykes on this Cassadin. Actually, kind of understated. Cassadin, you know, he is a weak early game champion. And people tend to think that means, you know, weak laning. But into melee champs, he kind of, he, he can manhandle them. Now, Ashida could be in trouble. No flash. Morgana plus sets out. It's pretty good. Jungle either. And the cro 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 Crocodile's trying to run. Will be able to dodge out of the route, but the burn oh, right. from the red buff will be enough. Scumont able to um, glide away. And it's another kill on the top side. This time, goes over to the jungler. Goes over to the jungler. And I mean, at the end of the day, you saw the wave that Sheeda's going to miss. And now it's such a big advantage for in four up on the top side. He's going to pick up that Bramble Vest. It's just the cloth armor on Sheeda's side. As oh, on the bomb end. Pulls back and that's a nice headbutt. Has needs to be very, very careful. Try to get away. Go Won't on. be able to do so. And will go down. Cool it's must have got the kill. And with the trap, is feeling a little bit more confident to step forward. Has the reset on W as well. But not oh. going to look for the kill just yet. Surprised Impulse didn't jump forward there. Had the exhaust as well. Frankly could have joined in. Uh, with a flash if they wanted to take the full-on 2v2. Instead, opting for the lane reset. Effectively, we'll shove this lane out. Kukum will just teleport back down to not miss any CS. But Impulse and Reichley winning out in the 2v2. Good start for Enclave, and I mean, mm. we said that it might be casted in that breaks this game. It seems like the side lanes are going to break it faster. And of course, if the Kasten's in a team that's doing all the work for him in the early stages, it's going to be very, very happy, as you said. Yes, he's not the strongest champion in the earlier stages, but can definitely do a job. And as you, it's going to be difficult to take him down just because of his passive and tankiness. And if the spell shield's going on top of him, it's going to be rough for members of Viperio. 2P looking to make his uh, reset here. Staying pretty much on parity with Sykes, but not really putting any pressure down. And as you say, Enclave across the map, doing good work so far. Yeah. Mm. Or Enclave, I mean, if they stay in this game state, it's not a terrible place to be. Well, just a few thousand gold up, always having agency. First move onto these objectives. You can live happy with that. Moving up towards that mid lane, just will be clearing out some vision from Enclave. No point hanging around in lane when it's under tower. And of course, with the Tristana, it's quite easy to push the lane in, even against the Ziggs, who has very strong wave clear in his own right. But dragons on the menu. It's Infernal, first one of the game. Jamada should be pretty simple for Enclave to take, right? Yeah, should be. I mean, they've got the priority from the mid lane. Uh, the, this wave is stacking up. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Scoobon just run it straight to the dragon right now. Bottom lane priority too. Crashing the waves at similar times. Sykes actually wants to get a reset off here, but we'll have teleport. So he can just come back out onto the map. Now, Dakin potentially making his first move here. We'll be spotted out though. Will be spotted out by Rightly and will be knocked oh. up before he gets the fight, but he's been knocked directly into Scoodmond and not the welcome he needs. He's going to take the lantern out of that fight. Enclave moving back into lane. But yeah, Morgana on hand to make sure that, that play didn't go south for Enclave. Yeah. Almost. In a way, it's a little surprised that Dakin didn't die in the CC. Or bound, uh, bind it up. Fortunately, the lantern was there. Stunned from Rightly also couldn't come through from the trample, so couldn't secure the full duration and with that I'm not going to look to try and commit onto the dragon I'm just going to go back into the farming pattern here Scoomond is and Dakin now has Moonfall and that vision has just been re-cleared out Enclave needs to be a bit weary of this because honestly Haste still has Flash could go forward yeah, Dakin coming on through gets yeah. a very nice play coming through the Death Sentence lands onto the Alistair and the damage onto Impulse is pretty big but he's still half health try to stumble away but the Diana will jump on top of it one more attack and it's all she wrote Scoodmon there not able to save the ADC, but will be able to help Richly get out. Yeah, real nice setup there from Viperio. Great play from Hase to also interrupt the rocket jump of Impulse and not able to make it out of that gank. Skumon, just a little too late. Return back to the farming pattern there. Back in attacks as soon as he has Moonfall. Great response from Viperio. They need a little bit more. A couple of pings came out to the dragon just then from Enclave, but it seemed like they decided against it. As the top laners mellowed out for the most part. They got it out of their systems early, yeah. these two top laners. They had that scrapper level one and then 
or level two even, and then both teleported back and continued. But since then, Bramble Vest picked up by both members of the top lane, and it's just a sign of, right, you're not doing any damage to me, I'm not doing any damage to you, let's just chill out. As Glaive, it's a little bit delayed, because Rift Herald has now spawned onto the map, but they have got themselves the first Infernal Dragon, and now macro objective attention has to turn towards the top side. Yeah, certainly so. Herald will be the next focus for both these teams. Uh, Shadar hasn't necessarily had that much priority in the top side since the early skirmishes. Naturally so. Uh, you die 1v1 and then you get dove and lose a big wave. It's not going to be the best fight in the world for you. Uh, Skumon has a clear path up to the top side and honestly so does Dakin. Almost uh, finished clearing out his top side jungle as well. But it's a bottom lane priority here from Enclave. They need to stick around for one more wave before they can leave though. Recognize that return and once they do, can certainly make an attack into the river from that bottom lane priority or M4 as well as he makes it back to this lane likely will uh, fast chop it out and then Enclave if they want to they can sign the common terror. Okay, looking to push into this bot lane. Able to do it. Both Ziggs and Tristan are very able of pinning and destroying these waves in short order. Both supports pretty capable of keeping them alive so far in the game. Of course Tristana did go down but we won't be blaming likely for that one as Coming up towards the 10 minute mark, the game has slowed a little bit from the early burst of energy we got from people in the first few levels. And now we're looking towards this Rift Herald. Is there anything that these two teams, do we expect to see a fight over this objective basically, or will it just be handed over to Onkyo? Uh, I feel like Viperio, if they try and skirmish, it could go wrong. However, champion strength, to me, I feel like you would potentially feel Viperio could come out ahead, but there's so many tools on both ends. It's really difficult to call, in my opinion. I think one-to-one, -one, everyone's kind of even in the, the amount of impact they can have. Maybe you'd definitely edge Silas over Kassadin, sure, depending on what armor these Silas can steal away, but even Kassadin at this early stage, he's got the Rift Walk stacked up. He's about to really do the hurt. Ooh, actually has coming in, forcing the flash away from Cassidin. Sykes not interested in getting involved even with the ultimate and the mana there to use it. The Scoobmon just happily taking the Rift Herald on the side, and if there's a flash for this objective, I'm sure Enclave will be happy to take it. Yep, absolutely. No dragon on the map for Viperia to cross map. You can see there's no dive attempt being made right now. So they are stacking the wave. Let's see. Oh, Scoobmon. i to find that binding. Actually, we'll just check the bush, actually. I don't think he's going to do much more than that. Pops the recall, which is always nice. It's going to be slowing up Scootmon just a little bit. Last time these teams oh, met by period one, doing so again would lead to a four-way tie for fourth place. I saw a couple of people tweeting about that um, during the break, Jamala. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned it first, so, you know, shout out. Credit where it's due. And, you know, I don't give you that much credit on these broadcasts because they make some pretty outrageous statements. But on this occasion, quite interesting if they could pick up a win and prove you correct. Yeah, I suppose so. And I mean, Viperia winning this game here would make the standings a whole much, a bunch more entertaining, if you ask me. Especially also if London pick up a win after this game, we'll leave a three-way tie for first place as well. So a lot going on there. And actually, yeah, take into consideration the head-to-head -head a lot here. Uh, the last time these two teams met, it was Viperia that came out of a win. So emphasis on Enclave really to make sure that they can win and kind of keep Viperia in their place. Make sure it's just another team that for sure can't really tie up with them or a win out on the head-to-heads. Actually, I'm trying to think about some of the head-to-heads in the uh, top three race. Must we have a little bit of ref uh, respite. Eminem. Oh, Eminem on have... I think, did Eminem, London beat Eminem once. I think it's a 1-1 in that head to head. I think. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just uh, taking a look here at the head to head. So yeah, Eminem are one-on-one -on -one with London. Yeah. And as far as Resolve Academy goes. I think they're one-on-one -on -one with London as well. I think. No, 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 I'm doing Eminem first. Oh, okay, sorry. It's okay. My apologies. It's, right. it's, it's fine. So. It, uh, it's coming home. It's, is it coming home? I today. Well, I hope. <laughs> I haven't got any updates. I, I'm not actually watching the game. Ah. I'm what they call the consummate professional. Right. I see. Yeah, so Eminem, they should be equal with London, which just doing the double checks right now. Uh, 
they are. They are one to one. And then as far as Resolve Academy goes, Eminem still have to play their second uh, round against them. Yes, tomorrow actually. Ooh, big game on the Monday. Big game on the Monday. Eminem, of course, did beat out Resolve in the initial head to head. So they are to pick up that win tomorrow. It will, in a way, knock out Resolve in terms of having a strong shot at making it to first place. Assuming that they can then go on and win. Go on and tie. Remaining games. Yeah. Rift Herald dropped in the mid lane. Took a while to figure that one out, guys. I'm sorry. I'm bad at maths. And also the schedule, trying to do it in the middle of a class. My eyes don't work properly as a uh, gold on our screens at the moment. You know, incremental leads here and there. Only major one. It's all in the top side. 600 gold. Does mean in for having a little more of a comfortable time in this matchup in comparison to the rest. Or uh, what you can, would consider a lot of the other set players would have into your typical Renekton matchup. Now, Hase, I, I respect the I respect the patience and the uh, the attempt, but Skumond is good with the smite. He's going to lose that one, and it's two dragons to Enclave, mm. Mountain Soul, in a game like this versus you know champions who you know do like to build pen in Ziggs's case and Diana's and. On top of that, just in general, don't really like dealing with air resistances and shields. Pretty potent if Enclave were able to pick it up, and I mean, I don't know how anyone's going to kill Sykes if he ends up picking up that mountain soul. It'll be 10 minutes if they are going to do that at earliest, if Enclave are able to pick themselves up both of these objectives. And while the game's been pretty slow paced, we talked about how this is kind of okay for Enclave. They're not too worried about this kind of more pedestrian tempo that we found ourselves in in this third game of the day to give us a little bit of time to relax and um, take stock of where these two teams are understandings what the standings could look like if results go in certain ways but with 15 minutes on the clock of course plates have fallen off there are no more to be taken and gold hasn't really been impacted one way or another so it will just be a case of where do you think the first big engagement should be in this game is it a third dragon potentially yeah, I think at this point it's looking like it's going to be Fur Dragon. I don't know if these teams are really going to fight it or duke it out for the second Herald. Uh, you know, it's a pretty impactful Herald in my opinion. Uh, but in a game like this where there's no towers taken, uh, it loses its value a little bit, to be honest with you. Uh, Kum Kum. Kum Kum. Just be a little bit careful. He's a bit overextended. Um, has support in the wings. Dodges out the Everfrost. Nice ultimate, but he's still going to be cut down by Sykes. But now... Casting could be in trouble if the death sentence lands the flame first. There's the box, the flash, yep, and um, the ultimate to freedom. And the teleport coming through, Rightly coming down. Nice dunk into the wall, take it in trouble. Sykes jumping back into the fight to secure another kill. Ashida teleporting and just kind of started stepping away. But Enclave turned around the play and grabbed themselves a couple of kills. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure about that positioning, Kum Kum. It's a level 11 Casterdon. He's got that Rift Walk a little more readily available to him now. In the mid lane, Topi potentially about to get locked up. Probably gonna have to, yep, flash away. A little bit of damage there on the side from Impulse, but does manage to back away. And second Rift Herald on the map, which you said is pretty important. Is that because of the um, the side lane towers giving a little bit more gold? Yeah, I mean, so when I say typically the second Herald is, is really impactful in games, it usually, in a lot of early games at the moment, towers have already dropped. And it means that there's, mm. you know, even more accessible targets or more sort of easier to predict where these teams are likely uh, to want to put these Heralds down because, well, sometimes things are just obvious when it comes to, hey, there's only one hour tower left up, or hey, this tower's really, you know, it's in Herald range, etc. Right now, outside of that mid-tier one, and maybe this top tier two, uh, you know, these towers, mid-tier mid one, pretty good to take against the Ziggs, but it's so low that you wouldn't want to drop a Herald for it. This top side tower now is kind of at that range too, where it's like, okay, we kind of don't commit a herald for either uh and i mean even if Iperia got it it would just be like nice we got gold that's about it uh, so in a game like this it doesn't really matter that much unless somebody picks up a big team fight win which could happen right here this is a pick nice dunk back big shield Gumon coming on through but it's gonna be stolen away nice route oh, down no. onto the diana but just need to be careful as morgana might be in trouble a decent amount of damage coming in from 2b the flash forward but a flash away from morgana the tower could help the root doesn't land though oh. taken steps away with a sliver and gets the shield from fresh on the way out but 
No one going down, but a close, close fight. Yeah, very close fight indeed. Starts off with Viperio trying to get a pick uh, onto M4, but fortunately Spoonmon shows up, almost turns it around back in. In my opinion, very lucky to walk away with his life. A little bit of an overcommit there, but Enclave, right now, I feel like their only like, good option with this Herald is drop it bot just because it's the highest HP tower. Because like this mid lane tower is going to die in a second. Line. Like look, this tower's gone. Like, bye. Oh, okay. So because it's a champion, never mind. I take that statement back. Kim Kim's making you look a little bit stupid. You know, yeah. little Yordle having a good time. I like the skin yeah, actually. Yeah, that's a nice little skin. Got a little hat, love and life. Gonna be going back to base and the tower will likely fall on this wave. In fact, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it's definitely gonna fall on this wave. Impulse gets his mark and takes the first tower of the game. 19 minutes in, we're certainly on a bit of a slower meta, a little bit of a slower tempo in the past couple of game days here at the UKLC, where first we were saying 27 minutes, a lot of people are considering that to be late game as Rift Held has summoned bot to try and cause some problems. But it's been some pretty big ones. Raj right? gets oh. a nice double knock up here, looking to start the fight. The box is up, but the route goes wide. Kukum needs to be careful as the set drags him back in. He can't take the satchel charge out, and Sykes will make sure that he's not going anywhere. Damage going through with Dagon, oh, but he no. will fall to be trying to escape, but he's going to be chased onto by Sykes. The route is there, but Kasten not hugely interested in the dive, but they take enough members to take down the dragon as well, and Enclave running away with this just a little bit. All right, so I don't like to call games early or anything. Okay. You know, I say this quite frequently, actually, because I don't, I don't like. Do you say that? Do you usually say that just before calling games early? Yes, I do, because I feel like this game is potentially out of Viper's reach already, unless Enclave, unless they're on my my old internet service provider or you know, honors just <laughs> turn off. I don't know how you can lose with a 4 0 Kasten in a, in a game setup like this, where there's also the Black Shield to work with. You've also got the backup of a Tristana scaling. He's just gonna have a free time to kind of murder anybody he wants. He's already at two items. He's significantly ahead of his lane counterpart. He's significantly, uh, significantly ahead of basically everybody in the game except Impulse. I I don't know. I mean, we get the replay of the fight here. Real nice uh, proactivity from Rightly to try and knock up those two members. Brings Hase back into the fray. Impulse is forced to flash, but look at the bottom side in for interrupts Kum Kum Satchel. Just gives free damage over to Sykes, who also picks up the kill credit for that in. Isn't able to slow down Topia or, 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 or otherwise he probably would have just died and on the back end. And Hase now, or pass rather, sitting in the top side, trying to see if Sykes will get aggressive, but even if he does, he's got the back up of Skumon right now. Looks like they'll call off the play though. Enclave trying to settle towards the top side. One dragon away from Mountain. We're pretty happy about that as well. And that's what I mean. It's just the added pressure for Viperio to try and make something happen in the next three and a half minutes. What can you do? Because if you try and make a play anywhere, you probably get double TP'd on if it's not one of the solo laners. Yeah. You can't really work numbers advantage almost ever. If you can't work numbers advantage, then typically you try to fight 5v5, but you can Certainly can't fight 5v5, we've just seen that. Picks just probably won't work unless it's on like Impulse, who's just caught on a really weird rotation. You gotta give me something, Ichimada. You gotta I, give me an answer. Like, I, I'm be. trying my best to be optimistic, but I just, I can't reasonably find a way. Outside of like some crazy Moonfall, uh, Mega Inferno Bomb kind of fantasy, I, I just don't see it. I'm just going to be honest, I, the Viper are kind of in a hole right now. Sykes is two levels away from a Ding Ding level 16. Which is always fun. Which is always fun. And once he hits that mark, I mean, I I don't know. I don't know who's going to be able to deal with Kassadin. Again, the CC outside of Shader, all skill shot based. So good luck.
trying to deal with that. That's as a skill a... shot that lands, though. That's CC that lands, yeah. and that's a dead jungler. You talked about the pick, but that's not the way around it was. But maybe onto Sykes could be the option. There's teleport, teleport coming teleport. through. Both teams getting involved as members are moving up from Enclave by Pyro in the mix to try to get around as many members as possible before the rest of the reinforcements arrive. Sykes oh. is shut down, coming through from Sheeda as Infor needs to move away a little bit to stay safe. But look at the members coming in. Rightly is here. Scudamon is here. They're looking to burn down. Get to the impulses now. Arrive. Enclave clean up the team fight. They lose Kasten, but they take down everyone else from Viperio. It's just Kungun standing to clear the waves. Is that enough to move towards this Baron? I think it is. Absolutely. You've got this Morgana with the Leandries. You've got a two IMAD carry. It's not actually the traditional uh, crit items, but at the end of the day, Kraken Slayer Tristana still going to do the job just fine. Should be Baron. Kum Kum isn't going to be allowed access into the river. There'll be a little slow, but 23 minutes into the game, you take this Baron. It's going to eclipse the Mountain Dragon more than that should just be Soul. Baron goes down and well, this looks like a good pick initially. I mean, for Viperia in the top side, yeah, I, it looks fine. I think slightly misplayed by Sykes when it comes to Rift walking back in. They feel like they have enough damage by the Kingslayer healing, I believe, is what keeps uh, Topia alive. As you'll see, the head, uh, head smack into the Ulmer. They try and burst him down. Yeah, 290 into that uh, stopwatch just means that, yeah, Shida able to pick up that shutdown. Skumon, slightly to me, I think going on task. You might want to go and help your uh, rest of your members, but he's okay anyway. The man ends up taking away a double kill. Feels pretty happy about that. So just, I suppose, even sloning Haas away uh, so that he can't really drop a meaningful lantern. Pretty damn good. And Sykes, I mean, he's halfway to level 15. 24 minutes into the game. He's having a good game, this Sykes. He, he might just walk onto Toby here and kill him. I can definitely see it happening. Toby, of course, has um, a lot of sustain. Sykes um, is <laughs> ramping up that damage. Now Toby has the ultimate as well, and he's actually going to be sustaining quite well. This is going to be much closer than you might initially think, Sykes. No. In two... Okay. I, I don't know if he had to flash. I feel like I... he could have just stuck on top of him, so I agree with your silence. It's yeah. star points, isn't it? Like, you know, you've got to give up. That was actually a surprisingly close fight until it wasn't. Kukun -Kuk might be called out on the side. Impulse putting oh. down the damage. Oh, might the bomb, well the bomb, explode. The There's the bomb. It's going to do damage and it's going to be a trade. One for one. Both marksmen fall as members of Enclave. There's only three, four of them on the map. Three of them in the vicinity. Teleport is available for the cast if he wants to get involved. The dragon going to be start up. A Vibhero could look for a contest. 50. Frankly, playing bodyguard, doing his best. Finally comes out. I think that's too much zoning. Yeah, there goes the dragon. It's going to be secured. And now they've got Alistair in the back line. Is Rachel trying to escape? Is Rachel trying to engage? He's going to be dragged in by the Death Set. It's trying to make his way out. Actually, he's, he he's really not decided. Infor's there, but he's like, no, come on, Alistair. It's time to go home. He's going to be caught out by the oh. Death Sentence, but the damage coming down from Morgana. The puddle secures the kill, and no one was decided about going into that fight, but Scoodmon picks up the kill regardless. All right, well. I think I know what way uh, this game's going. Seems like it's coming home for Enclave. Sykes, too strong on the side lane as well. We've lost the soul. The options for Viperio are very limited and it's a bit of a sad game, realistically, to lose. When you think about the uh, implications it could have had for the standings, but such a big win for Enclave. Mm. Feels like a matter of time. I don't want to you know, call it too early, but guys, it's an 8,000 gold lead with a mountain soul on a level 16 caster with no one who can match him on the side lane. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident in this call. But what else? What else about Enclave, eh? What, what, what else have they got? Don't, we're not even gonna, don't worry about it. What else have they got, eh? If Kasten's not there? Uh, I mean, if Kasten isn't there, great. Maybe Viperio can find an in, but he's, in most cases, gonna have teleport. Uh, so he will always be there. He never won't be. <laughs> That's not... <laughs> this doesn't fill me with hope for this game. I know. I'm so I will come back into look, this one. I, I I bring it blunt. Alright, I don't I don't pull punches. Kum Kum's dead. Good night, Kum Kum. Back to the death chamber. And top tower falls, mid tower will follow. Viperio, I think your your ship sailed a couple of minutes ago. The time might be numbered here as Rightly looks to get the engage. Can find the headbutt on Dashida. The damage coming down and Scoodmon secures another. They're going to look to see John. They don't have the Baron buff anymore, but they will be able to start breaking down these inhibitor towers. They grab the first one top in four down in the bot side, but they're still an inner tower to secure their mid lane. Daken and Hass hanging around trying to defend, but there's enough 
Enclave members that we know how much damage Sykes does. We're looking towards the bot side as M4 and 2P returning to this 1v1. It's not going to be close if Impulse gets himself involved. No, but the dunk away onto the Yawl. He goes golden to buy a second, but... Oh, actually... You know what? He's making his excuses and he's going to leave. Info not going to be able to catch him just yet. His impulse will take up the siege mantle in the base. The second inhibitor will crumble. Second crystal down. Sykes looking towards potentially further plays, but it looks like Enclave respectfully are going to try to play this one by the numbers. Moving towards this bot lane to try and take down the third inhibitor. But as you said, Jamada, it's slow, it's methodical, but it doesn't seem to be a way back into this one for Viperio. It's a slow bleed if I've ever seen one. Oh, well, they burnt Flash on Alistair. No, that was Hex. Hey, hey Hex Flash down. Hey. <laughs> you got to give me something, dude. There's got to be. Like, <laughs> there has to be. Okay, Will, so. I admire the fact that you're a glass half ball kind of guy. But this just isn't the game. I promise you. You know what, Will? What did you have for breakfast today? Um, I had a glass of coffee. I didn't have anything else for breakfast today. I've got to give Wait, it Wait, a glass? No, like the other glass. No, so I I drink um iced coffee, but like I buy the oh, okay. coffee, right. so I usually pour it out into the glass because nice. I prefer drinking it in a glass rather than a can for coffee. Yeah, yeah, fair fair enough. enough. Also, I can have nice keep from feeling particularly warm today. This morning wasn't that warm, so I didn't do that. But you know, I, um, but how about you? What did you serve up? Oh, uh, so we've been having some technical issues in the house, so we didn't have a cook off uh, recently. Okay. So I've been eating much microwave food. Uh, I had. Uh, egg fried rice and uh, chicken oh, and breakfast. black bean sauce. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot that you're on weird not human time. Yeah. Because yeah. we talked about this before we went on air because you were eating yeah. sound check. That was that was my breakfast. No, that's what do you mean that's your breakfast? Sound check's a core of our score. This fight is gonna kill off the Dagan just gets absolutely deleted as the dunk down comes on through Sheena. Will be the next in line, sustains a decent amount, but it's just not enough. Enclave able to march forward into the base and hit to one and two already deleted already removed kum kum the ziggs has wave clear but he might not have life if he tries to step up to do so and these nexus powers oh, are not long for this world sykes is just running his blade through viperio the shield and the damage means impulse will pick it up has running to the wind but i don't think he's got any way out the damage is massive the win is massive and enclave secured themselves a vital victory over viperio yep we might have memed during the game by such an important win for them they secure themselves as a top four team for now bulldog and vision still on the chase five wins one win behind enclave now now we look towards the london game to see whether london can keep it competitive on the top end, make sure they don't potentially drop to fourth. Uh, seeding is kind of in, is impactful. In, in is a, I, I was thinking, it, it does first place just pick the, the team? No, they don't. Uh, it is, of course, one, four, two, three uh, in playoffs, as far as I'm aware, unless things have changed and I've not looked at the, uh, the admin rule book. So yeah, uh, Enclave though, it's a great win. I think this, the Castadon pick was just a game breaker. I, I don't think there's much a way to recover uh, from, from the Castadon pick. Uh, oh, and for Viperio, just not enough, you know, practically tools for me that they can reasonably work around them. Enclave took advantage. Not only did they take advantage, they got a lead out of it anyway. You get a lead in that kind of game, there's no throwing in my opinion. Yeah, there was no going back. As soon as Enclave put their foot on the accelerator, it was all go. Always going to be one outcome and Viperio fall by the wayside. We're going to jump to a short break. When we're going to come back, it's going to be a breakdown of that game. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in a few minutes.